The city of Folly Beach, South Carolina, getting ready to ring in the new year with its annual flip flop drop. Yes, that story kicks off today's trending stories. It's time for our hot topics brought to you by Tootsie at Walton Arts Center. The flip flop drop tradition has ushered in the new year at Folly Beach since 2011. Now you see them right there, a giant pair of what sparkling flip flops <laughs> will descend from a fire department. Ladder trucks as the crowd counts down to the new year on Saturday. Crews with Folly Beach Public Safety have already been practicing for the big event and... Uh, I like how it's like a long day at work. They're yeah. like, honey, how was your day? Well, well I was dropping giant glittery <laughs> flip-flops. Yeah. It's a, that's a story to come home and tell. If you're watching a huge, if watching a huge pair of shiny flip-flops drop on midnight on New Year's Eve isn't enough, there's also going to be, check this out, a Bill Murray look-alike polar plunge on New Year's Day. How many Bill Murray lookalikes could there be? <laughs> Participants encouraged to dress in their best Bill Murray costume before jumping into the cold Atlantic Ocean. Just like a bunch of Ghostbusters just diving yes, in the ocean. Yes, yes. You seem like a person who may do a polar plunge. Have you ever I, done I mean, one of those? If someone said, hey, loser, get in, we're driving <laughs> to the polar plunge, I'd be like, all right, let yeah. me grab my N.A. cocktail right. and then let's go. Less. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. I think I would do one. I don't know that we have a whole lot of them around here because it's it's always questionable whether it's going to be cold enough. When, when I got scuba certified, it was in Beaver Lake in the middle of winter, and the and we could only be in there for 38 minutes, otherwise we'd get hypothermia. So I've technically done You've one. You've done one, but yeah, you were all you 30 feet below the surface. Next time we're going to have you dress up like Bill Murray in a scuba then, suit. Yes. I'll be Steve Zissou. Steve Zissou. Yeah. Yes, I love it. Yeah, go check that movie out. It's a good one. Check this out, though. Birders are flocking to a Southern California neighborhood to catch a glimpse of a rare visitor from the north. That's right. Not talking about Santa this time. This snowy owl has been hanging out. Is that Hedgewig? <laughs> it, 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 it is. And the angry. It, it, inch? No, Hedgewig, for the, he's, the, he's Harry Potter's ah, owl. I'm quoting uh, Broadway, and you're, yeah. of course, going Harry Potter. I get it now. Well, this snowy owl has been hanging out in an Orange County neighborhood and drawing quite the crowd. The large white birds are native to the far north. According to the Audubon Society, they can travel south of the Canadian border during winter, just usually not that far south. So for many there in California, it's their first chance to see a snowy owl in the wild. I think that's pretty I cool. Feel, I feel really bad for the guy who has the, the the owl in his house and has all these people with like binoculars and cameras pointing at his house and windows like guys geez well give me some privacy right yeah we all need privacy maybe he's one of those that likes uh, birds maybe he's one of those birders so he's could thrilled be. about it could be Amy Poehler, Maya Rudolph, loving working together once again as co-hosts of the second season of Baking It on Peacock. The two often get uh, their show off their improv skills which is something I know Bo and I know a little bit about. A little bit. Yes, yeah, something they appreciate about the show. If it was scripted, it would be very stressful and painful, Polar said. Plus you'd have to learn and read. <laughs> right, <laughs> which I struggle with every day. <laughs> Although the baking show is a competition, Rudolph said it doesn't feel that way. There's a nice element to the show where people really want to root for each other and see each other succeed, and it feels cozy and not scary. And you can check out Baking It Season 2. It's now streaming over on Peacock. Looks fun. I love baking shows. I'm never good at it. I can never recreate it, but I love watching people try. Baking's a delicate science. Yeah. It's a lot more chemistry than you think. Yeah, I know. And with those two improv actors, it's a really fun show. Check Talk it out. Talk about chemistry. Yeah, there you go. It's nice. <laughs> Talk about feeling the holiday spirit. That's what we're going into now. As reported by the Hollywood Reporter Avatar, The Way of Water has crossed the $1 billion mark at the global box office in just 14 days. James Cameron's big budget sequel is only the sixth film to achieve that milestone in its first two weeks of release and the first to do it since Spider-Man No Way Home was released in December of 2021. The Christmas New Year corridor can be a boon for holiday releases with Avatar 2 being the latest example. And then when promoting The Way of Water, Cameron indicated it ultimately would need to earn about $2 billion to be considered a success. Of course, we all remember the first Avatar released 13 years ago remains the top grossing film of all time with $2.9 billion in global ticket sales. So, Bo Counts, have you seen it yet? I did see it. Yeah. I did see it. And it, it just, it still baffles me that, like, we're making films that have to have GDPs of small countries before mm. they're considered a success. Like, wow, like the amount it's of true. work. And, I mean, we've been waiting for, what, 14 years yeah. of hype? and. We've got, what, 17,000 more Avatar films that I think he's going <laughs> he's to make planning. after this. So. Although I really did enjoy this one, I have to say. Yeah. I had a great experience. It was, it was very, it was, a, it was a lot. There was a lot of A lot stuff of happening. A lot of stimulation. Three hours of just, ah! 
Yeah. I'm glad I didn't watch it in 3D because that I, oh, mean, I we wanted did. to. I wanted to so bad, but I was like, I don't know if my poor little eyeballs can handle it. Yeah. They could. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> I think the scene in 3D was fun. You know, it's not one of those movies where it's made to pop out at you yeah. the whole time. It just kind not of like, like is whoa. there. Right. Yeah, none and of if that. you wanted to, if you got motion sick or seasick, I don't know anybody who did, but I know there was a fear about that, you could pop those glasses up on yeah. your head and still see the story. You yeah. Know what I mean, it's one of those kind of 3D films.